education system in Ireland is very outdated. I think that um, Irish shouldn't be a mandatory subject. Um, I don't think you should be forced to just do all these subjects that are going to be irrelevant to you. Uh, as an immigrant, I not only went to Irish primary school, but I also did Polish school during the weekends. And that sounds pretty crazy. And it was, to be honest. I feel like the Polish, the Polish system, it's a bit more strict and has a higher demand in it than um, in Ireland. Uh, like, you can get extra grades for participation or extra curric... Um, there's, more, there's more after-curricular stuff. And it's not just music or sports I, either. It's... Uh, you could be student council in your primary school and other things like that. And yeah, I just feel like it was more broader, but also a bit harder. And I'm not really sure which one was better, but I'm glad I got to experience both. There are people like me who are not very mentally well and not very physically healthy, who were kind of thrown to the side and forgotten about. It was really frustrating because we were the ones who needed the help, not the people who were already really smart and kind of knew it already. It was us who were left to fend for ourselves when we needed the help. I have a bad memory. I can remember most things, but not everything. There's, when it came to exams, I had to study very hard. There was just so much stuff to remember and a lot of it I found really hard to remember. Um, a lot of people with my learning disability had to leave school so they could go to a special school because they're not getting enough support. Personally, I think there should be extra support in secondary schools. I definitely feel like I'm in a very competitive academic school anyway. It's one of the best schools in the country and yeah, I think there was a lot of pressure. And it's almost as if you have to prove you're worth the space you take up in the school. A good teacher can make or break you. A good teacher, even if you're not doing well in their class, they'll believe in you and they'll push you and you will reach your highest potential. I recognise that I have the privilege to an education and I appreciate those who stood for and continue to stand for education for all women around the world. One of my personal heroes is Malala Yousafzai, who was shot in the head for just wanting to go to school. And it's appalling that that still happens to this day. I don't think anyone should be denied their right to an education, regardless of their gender. I was probably even higher than the level that the boys were at, because, like, obviously, carpentry's in my blood, like, my, all, like, all of my family were carpenters. So I had, I have, uh, like up in that situation but you know 
some people don't expect girls to be good at constructions and stuff like that. So yeah, and I did that. I did DCG like for a while. Like if acting wasn't gonna work out, I was always gonna be an architect. I, I hate school. Like school is also for me. Um, Cause I go to an all girls school and they're really strict on rules. And like, you can't even ask for a tampon in school because they're like, oh, we're a Christian school or Catholic school. And it's just ridiculous the kind of rules they have in there. Sex isn't really talked about in schools. Like maybe in one SBG class. Oh, SBG is where we're supposed to learn like social issues and health issues, but everyone saw it as a DOS class, which, which is kind of strange. Like ideally, I kind of wish we learned more in that class. Like, zero education about LGBTQ plus issues and barely any education about safe sex. If there is any education, it's just, don't do it. If you do it, use a condom. I know more about the cells in the root of a plant than I do about any sort of sexual health or contraceptive methods, which I think is ridiculous. It's the same with mental health. The fact that our education system focuses so much on getting us to learn such a massive volume of information rather than developing us as people. 91% of Irish children attend a religious school. Only 5.6 in the entire country of primary schools are non-religious. Let that sink in. 5.6. I remember in primary school having Bioga Joe shoved down my throat for eight years. My hatred for Bioga Joe knows no bounds. And I hate to critique a system based on my own personal experience because when you're talking about system reform, it should be facts and statistics first. But I definitely feel like I'm not alone in how I feel about this. And I've had some great times in school as well, but overall I just found the environment to be kind of harmful and negative. And especially because your teenagers are such an extremely formative time and your brain chemistry is kind of resetting itself and kind of finding your feet socially and cultivating an identity. And subsequently, a lot of the teenagers are very sensitive to the system and this idea of proving your worth. I think it's terrible, like, at the end of two years, everything you've learned in one big exam that can decide your future, especially on subjects you might not need, even need for your future. Like you may like acting, but you don't particularly need geography. But if you don't get your certain grade in geography, you might not get your points for acting. It's a bit whack. I didn't even sit the leaving cert. And if I tried to sit now, I'd fail everything. Because I... none of the knowledge is retained in my mind. Learn it all off and write it down. Uh, I was very lucky and privileged to have that in my school where we were taken on a special retreat where for the first time I could come up with an equation to believe that I was loved because that's how my brain works, through logic. And I'd always been told that I was loved but I could never believe it. And on that special retreat that day, by exposure, by listening to other people's stories, by getting letters from my parents, I was able to believe that I was loved. And that started to snowball into great things. I started doing more. I started to enjoy living. I began to like living. Um, I decided to enjoy life. and. I feel if I hadn't been educated on mental health that my life would be very different right now and I wish other people could have that privilege of education that I've gotten. Well, this year we have a generation of people who don't have school or who have school in all its worst parts, <laughs> in my opinion. We have the classes, we have the tests, we have the learning, without any of the interaction, without any of the face-to-face, -face, the eye contact, the jokes with friends, 
the walking very, very slowly to your least favourite classes, the running to the shop before study, the jokes with teachers, the lunch times, the breaks, and given the circumstances of social distancing, of the risk and threat of a second surge of the coronavirus, when we do finally go back to school, will we be going back to anything familiar? Will we even be able to be in this education centre, in our school building, with our whole year, with our whole school? Only a few months ago, we were, my friends and I were organising to go to a festival with thousands and thousands of people all crammed into one place. And yet now, meeting up with your entire family without social distancing is absurd. Cramming 400 girls into a building for school is insane. So it would be interesting to see how things pan out and what the consequences will be for our generation and for later years. Will the people who didn't get a leaving cert this year be treated differently to other generations of graduates? My whole aspect on college has changed. I was anti-college. I didn't understand why everyone was expected to go to college. I still don't think everyone should go to college. I think it is pushed on everyone that you must go and you must get an education. I don't think I would have been ready to go into the world without um, college. And I definitely think I have found what I need. But now, <laughs> now I've been out of school for almost three years and I, I'm going to college in September. I just got a place in LCFE through interview. Um, I don't have my junior cert, I don't have my leaving cert, but I got in through interview and I've gotten in with my good CV, which is just me working during the summers working doing mainly art related jobs and uh, a lot of theatre work and just expanding what I can do. I feel like I've learned more outside of the school system than I did inside of the school system. I've learned like real life important things. And yeah, uh, I'll be in college in September even though I left school when I was 14. I guess that's kind of like the point of it all. When you basically decide that you want to be part of the arts, there's obviously going to be some kind of backlash. Unless your family are like, really cool with that sort of thing. But there's obviously going to be backlash. Because people are going to be like, ugh, really? But like, <laughs> I've got to do what I want to do or I won't be happy. Like, why would I go to university if I can't study what I want to study? You know? Uh... I think college is just a great place to learn more about the world and about other people and yourself even. We often presume that science is a man's business, that if it weren't for men then we would not be living in such a technologically advanced society. Forgetting of course that it was also men who stifled the voices of female scientists and even took credit for their work. Think of all the things we could have invented if men had not burnt us as witches for being more visionary, intelligent and creative than them. I think space is just so vast and so undiscovered that we can't even begin to fathom what we don't know about it yet. I mean, I, I just don't know why we stopped when we got to the moon. Um, <laughs> I've no idea what to say about this department, but I feel like that's kind of something that we all need to acknowledge, that a lot of us have no idea what to say about this department, because we aren't taught how to manage our money in school. I've never been good with money. I can save and save, but when I need one thing, like um, 
literally, I remember I needed a new bottle of shampoo. So I went into Dunn's and I picked up a nice bottle of shampoo. And then I saw a loofah. And I was like, I could do one of those two. So I ended up spending 30 euro when all I needed was a bottle of shampoo. I just wish I'd been taught when I was younger how to manage money. Um, I'm terrible at money and um, please don't leave my sock. I'm terrified of my taxes. You know, I'm just scared of them and I have to get my mom to do them. And that's the other thing as well. There's a huge problem with financial literacy and it really disproportionately affects impoverished people as well. And even if you do do subjects like business and economics in school, it's not comprehensive and you still don't have the life skills you need to manage money. And my mom always tells me when it comes to getting your wages and stuff that you always have to manage your pay slips yourself in that. And you always have to make sure you count up your hours yourself because if they think they can cheat you out of it, they will. And it sounds really cynical, but like I've seen it happen. Would accountants have jobs if people can manage their money? All I know the Department of Finance does is our annual budget and allocating funds to the different departments to different facilities and services across the country and the extent of my financing knowledge comes from a quote that my granddad said to my dad that was said to me that if you're making 20 euro a week you need to be able to survive on 19 which I think is very logical and sound advice but not everyone's parents are going to pass down quotes like that. So we need to reform our education system and create a generation of people who understand the value of money and how to make the most with what they have. Is that not more useful than having people fall behind trying to keep up with and learning and understanding equations that they will never ever use and learning who gets taxed and what do you get taxed and why instead of how to identify a isosceles triangle from an equilateral. I think that just the way everything's been structured up until this point is that money is kind of the blood of our society and I know that sounds very you know, anti the man, but I think it's kind of true anyway. I, as myself, have no idea how to work money. Not really. I know how to save, but I don't know how to pay taxes. I don't know how to pay rent. I don't know how to... I don't know really, know properly how to apply for a job. I don't know very important things that will keep me living for the rest of my life. I don't know how to budget myself. Don't know anything like that. Nothing of the sort was ever taught in school. Even if you did accounting, you wouldn't know shit. If I don't know more about it in the future, uh, I'm going to be quite fucked. I don't know shit. To be honest, I don't know a lot about this sector. It's kind of confusing to me. All I really understand is that this sector is most vulnerable to be replaced by robots and self-automated machines. I don't know a single thing on public expenditure and reform. I could not tell you anything. I had no idea what public expenditure really was until yesterday. I know that they keep the parks and kind of all that jazz, but which is obviously really important and 
libraries and public transport and everything. I doubt we kind of realise how much they improve our lives. Like, you don't know what you have till it's gone kind of way. If all of a sudden everything that the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform um, puts makes available to us, then if one day all of that disappeared, I guarantee the next day we'd know exactly what they do and what services they give to us because we would suffer tremendously without them. So the social um, services in this country couldn't survive without them? No country can? I guess I'm really grateful to be surrounded by so many things. Like the park is like a two minute walk away from me. Kind of all the public places and public areas are close to me. There's a certain charm to libraries and I kind of miss them now, especially because of quarantine and lockdown, because I haven't been there in a while. But libraries are, I just love going to libraries to study because they're just such a safe and comfortable space in the public. And that, that lets me concentrate because normally at home, I just get distracted and it, it's for free. Yeah. I just love libraries. For the Department of Public Reform and Expenditure, sorry I said that backwards, but this is what I'm talking about. They're meant to be doing their job, but they're having a nap. Um, like, in my first year of college, I had like a full nine to 10 hour day of college. Then I'd go home, have my dinner, and go work in a nightclub for like eight hours until three o'clock in the morning. Not once did I ever sleep on my job or sleep during my college education. I was always awake and alert, even if I didn't want to be. And it's so annoying that our government, who we rely on, the politicians who we pay to fix our society, help our society, don't even take their job seriously. And public services are good, definitely. You always need them in society, do you know? Like, look out for the little guys. For God's sake, like, don't leave people behind. It's very important. Uh, this is my response to public expenditure and reform. 